Okay, so this is a, a question that several of you have asked um, in advance, and uh, it is, let me bring up the slides, regarding just, uh, given a sequence, the idea of identifying epitopes from that sequence, whether they be B cell, T cell, you know. And so th this is um, obviously different than prediction in, in the context of using the database, um, but there is certainly a wide open set of possibilities if you were to do this in a prediction realm. So that's obviously tomorrow. Bjorn will introduce the analysis resource shortly. Um, so what I'm gonna cover more is you know, how would you take a protein, for example, an antigen sequence of interest and show what epitopes have been identified or in the database already? And one can imagine that there would be sort of two ways, um, two starting points. One possibility is you just have a, you know, your, your raw sequence, either from in-house or some other source. Um, and then the other common one is you identify a GI, and that's your starting point. Um, so. You know, both, are, uh, both of these are obviously viable options. The latter case where you have a GI is uh, one that we've covered fairly extensively, and, but maybe not explicitly enough, and that is that you can just, um, in the antigen box, simply put the identifier in, and if we have data linked to that particular source, it, it, it will come up. So, you know, for example, in this case, 1153... You know, you can get a quick jump to your protein and do a search there. But the one I wanted to show you would be more like a scenario where you have sequence. And we've done this, I think, with uh, several linear just peptides. But if you have a protein sequence, you can use the substring and or blast match for homology to see what we may have captured from the literature that way. So the substring is a good go-to, and basically the question being asked here is, are there epitopes that are identical matches within that stretch in the database? Um, so kind of in the spirit of what Carrie said, you know, you can start off with this, and then if you get nothing, you can loosen your criteria and go back to a blast and start maybe at 90 and drop it down, depending on what your interests are. But here you see a um, quick hit on, you know, half a dozen or so peptides that uh, weren't necessarily cited to that same sequence, but are, you know, 100% conserved in the sequence that you or that we use there. Um, so nothing's different here in terms of the data display, but uh, I think that's quite useful because uh, a lot of times, again, as Kerry was saying, people will... Um, frame this in the context of predicting an epitope from a source antigen and we tell them well you don't necessarily have to go to the prediction level first check for experimentally validated data and in our uh, workshops and booths we often find people surprised that they're the data that they're interested in is already is already out there you know it's buried in the literature uh, so you don't necessarily have to start at a prediction level that's kind of the idea. So th th that was basically the, the very simple idea of putting in a sequence and as your query parameter. And then, of course, you can com combine that with other constraints, uh, if you'd like, if you're interested in only certain types of responses, et cetera. Um, we're pretty tight on time, so I don't know if I can take questions. If you guys have any questions, either for myself or Carrie, following up on, please. Sorry, would you mind using the mic, please? How do we know the MHC restrictions of this list? Okay, so if there are T-cell responses, um, you can go to, to the column that Carrie had pointed out and, you know, either sort, download the data and look at it that way. So if the restriction has been reported, it's located here. And then, of course, we do, we haven't emphasized this as much, but there, we do capture binding data as well. So if you're not strictly interested in uh, only a T cell response, but you may be interested in binding um, those alleles for which there's either been 
that peptide has been eluded from that allele or shown to bind in the context of a cell-bound MHC or purified MHC, that will be there in this other tab as well. I, was, I hope I addressed your question, yes? Okay, great.